Hello again, everyone. Mark Hackman, Macomb County Executive. John Paul Red, Deputy Executive. Just giving you a little bit of update on what's going on with the COVID virus, specifically here in Macomb County. Uh, John Paul, where are we at with the numbers? Mark, what we're looking right now at cases is just over 5,300 cases countywide and about 548 deaths. Uh, statewide, what we're currently at is just over 38,000 cases and 3,400 deaths. The interesting thing is, Mark, though, is that we're starting to see kind of a plateau with regards to uh, uh, the cases that are reported each day. About 100 cases is where we've been on as far as um, uh, the spread of cases. Health department's reporting an average reduction. So I think that's good as far as a more long-term prognosis with regards to the containment of the virus. And it shows that some of these social distancing practices and personal responsibility that we've been talking about seems to be impacting the curve. Okay. So the important factor we keep talking about, all the health experts out there nationally, statewide, as well as our local experts are telling us the main thing we're looking at right now is, uh, you know, is the social distancing work Working, is it having an impact? Um, we're starting to see that plateauing, which is a good thing, and even some of the, I guess, downward trends. Where we were seeing, I think it was 200 cases um, a day. Now we're down to at least 100 a day. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, that's a good sign. Um, at least we're hearing that from our professionals. And uh, so I got to believe, you know, the stay home orders having an impact on that, as well as people really kind of weighing in with their own personal, I guess, responsibility and the social responsibility of trying to make sure they're doing the social distancing and wearing masks. From the hospital and the critical care side, the other message we received this morning from the health department is for, as with regards to the deaths, there's fewer per day that are being reported also. So again, the care that's being offered to those individuals, whether it's some of the critical elements that are coming in from the ventilators, some of the other compassionate elements that they're bringing in across the healthcare systems, again, a better handle on the spread of the virus, a better handle on that critical care element, and again, some positive of metrics, but we want to remind you individuals every day we wake up, those numbers are going to creep up more and more and more, but it seems to be at a plateau level at this yeah, time. Yeah, so don't rest on, uh, you know, the fact that we think these numbers are down, it's gone away, everything's great. That's just not the case. So this is going to be a long-term issue we're going to be dealing with uh, for months to come, um, you know, but we're also uh, hearing some good things out of the hospitals that they're they're open uh, to accepting people to come in for other treatments. Mm -hmm. uh, some people were afraid to go into the hospital because they thought, you know, they shouldn't be there because it was COVID. You know, granted, there may be some concerns about people visiting, people that are COVID patients, but the reality is if you've got heart issues, you've got some kind of issues, uh, symptoms showing something that is pretty severe, uh, you need to go ahead and uh, go to the hospital and uh, you just use those emergency rooms because they are open and available for those purposes. Mark, the healthcare system is open. I think that's one of the key messages that we want to get out to folks. Whether you need to engage a primary care physician, whether it's an urgent care, whether it's emergency room care, the hospitals have reassured us. Also, opening up those elective surgeries, I think giving individuals more out Let's to to assess their own care and be able to get back into a normal co a, a normal cadence of getting the care that they need. Yeah, and again, we do, we were asked to remind people because we know there's this concern about you know ingesting some type of disinfectants or you know household products that could be dangerous to one another. You know whether it was something that was you know said intentionally, unintentionally, it got out nationally, and so the, we know there are some cases where people um, have decided to do that and uh, found themselves uh, you know obviously in some pretty pretty dire straits as a result of it. So do not ingest any type of chemical. I mean, it's uh, uh, something that should go without, you know, I guess, warning. But unfortunately, there's some people, and I do believe a couple of these cases, people did have some challenges uh, with, you know, understanding this and decided to, you know, I guess, accept that this might help them. And uh, it did not. Uh, so with that being said, our healthcare professionals are trying to warn people, don't do that. Uh, not a good idea. Um, so not trying to politicize an issue here, but once again, trying to make sure people understand about making rational decisions uh, about those kind of, uh, you know, I guess, self-help type things they might want to do. Don't do that. So. What else we got from the health department? Maybe. Yeah, Mark, the other thing with regards to the health department is the whole notion of the containment strategy, that contact tracing is a big part of it. We have staff that's working on a day-in, day-out basis trying to understand the science behind the spread of the virus specifically within our community. Whether it's information that we're putting up on our dashboard to understand the community spread, whether it's some of those hot spots that may be opening up or giving services to those vulnerable populations, whether it's in our senior homes or in our congregative care facilities, all those variables are into the equation and that's where we're not only staffing up and getting them resources but understanding how we can coordinate that care across the entire county. Yeah so when you talk about staffing up I mean this, uh, this ramping up and try to figure out how do they do this contact tracing uh, boy it's, it's like detective work incredible amount of resources and time as far as uh, you know committing to that to try to follow up on a positive case make a determination who they may have come in contact with uh, so our health department really has ramped up and I mean their staffing is incredible 
uh, took over a conference room or the health department to do just that. And that's what people are doing is making these calls. And so, you know, we've got this push out there right now, answer the call. Yes, sir. Uh, health department is calling you. Uh, you need to pick up that phone and uh, answer that call. They're trying to give you some forewarnings, some information, uh, I guess uh, some insight as to what uh, maybe you might have come in contact with. So you know, our, our health department is really trying to get that information out there and uh, trying to make their work a little bit easier by, uh, by working with them so that we can, I guess, continue to make sure that we're containing the actual spread of this virus. And Mark, there's always that fear and concern with right now with, you know, scams and those things that are out there and, you know, folks are always skeptical, but please understand that if you're contacted by, by Macomb County, an affiliated professional within our health department, they will identify themselves, they will provide per, ap appropriate references for the information that they need, and again, they're not going to get any type of personal information with regards to your social security number or anything like yeah, on credit that cards, or ask for money birth or dates, anything. Yes. Uh, any of that type of stuff. They're not looking for that. They're just asking if somebody you know, particular is there, have you kind of contact with somebody, uh, they might just kind of warn you and just tell you basically to uh, uh, make sure that you're self-isolating and if you had any other person that you might have come in contact with. So it's kind of that little tree, I guess, if you will. They're trying to make those connections and again, no, no information that's uh, critical to you or personal uh, is going to be obtained by our health department. So if you start getting that, it's probably a scammer that's looking for something for another wrong Mark, purpose. this is a common medical practice. This is something that we have trained professionals that are going to respect you and your loved ones. But when we're faced with an epidemic like this, this is where we really have to not only ensure that the public knows that we're going to engage you, but also get the necessary information that we need to understand how this virus is spreading across the community. Yeah. So again, uh, we know there's some orders out there. There's a little bit of a conflict dealing with the governor's order on masks, when, when you shouldn't wear it. Suffice it to say, the simplest way of dealing with it, whether it's in your own work environment, uh, business, uh, or you're at other you know, social event, or you might be out and about someplace, the simplest way of putting it is if you can don the mask you know, for your own personal safety as well as the safety of others, don the mask. And again, a cloth garment doesn't need to be anything uh, special. Uh, if you've got some of the uh, lower grade masks, that's fine. Um, not the N95s. We're saving that for healthcare professionals and our first responders. But making sure that if you're within six feet that you're donning the mask is going to be something I think where you're being you know, at least uh, not polite, uh, but you're doing the right thing on behalf of yourself as well as others in and around the area to help, I guess, uh, continue to figure out how do we keep this spread from spreading. Mark, it's one of those things where it's taking those common sense approaches. You know, we're hearing some of those conflict points that are out there, whether it's some of the anecdotal stories we've been hearing from grocery stores and some of the conversations we've been having, whether it's people that are putting calls into our public safety officials around the county and around the state and everything. These safeguards are in place to provide people with options to protect themselves and those families. And as you've said from time and time again, it's taking a responsible approach, it's using that personal responsibility, it's practicing those social distancing guidelines and ensuring that, as you say every single time when we close out the video, Videos, protecting yourself and your family. Yeah, and I, I remind people we're at our communications technology center just below is uh, where we have our dispatchers for 911. In fact, just earlier before we got on here uh, talking, uh, we had heard one of the dispatchers given instructions on how to perform CPR on a particular individual. I say that because there are still critical issues that are going on. Uh, there's still a need for 911 and law enforcement and first responders to deal with things. The one thing they don't need to be doing right now is being the CDC police or the mask police or social distancing police. So, you know, we really, again, I, I, I really recommend or strongly encourage people to kind of you know, work with one another, try not to get into everybody else's uh, business or their space, if you will, uh, but really calling 911 or calling the police because somebody's not wearing a mask or somebody's within six feet is not the proper use of law enforcement at this point in time. We're just hoping everybody complies with those type of recommendations from the CDC that have been ongoing uh, from the onset of this and now are being put into orders, you know, on behalf of some of the governors as well as maybe some other municipalities. But again, we shouldn't have to sit there and figure out how do we call the police to police those type of issues. We should just kind of do it amongst ourselves. And Mark, those are things that we're assessing not only from our own county operations, but understanding how we get them out to our partners and providers, whether it's on the community service side, the nonprofit groups that are helping us, the schools that are doing the food delivery. What are those protection items that we're going to put in place so we can give people the critical care that they need and the resources that they need in the most appropriate and safe environments? Yeah. And again, just a quick reminder, I, I, I always want to push on this. Uh, this whole census 2020 bring back our money. Uh, there's going to be a critical need for that in light of what we're seeing with budgets across the entire country. We're hearing some incredible challenges the state is going to be facing with their budget currently. And uh, with that being said, fortunately our finances are in good order for 2020. We are going to have those same challenges in 21, uh, 22, and so are your local units of government here in Macomb County. So census 2020 helps bring back not only the money, but also our representation uh, at the federal level. So 
please fill out those forms, go online and do so. Uh, we're actually in, uh, we're in good standing right now. We're actually doing pretty good as a state, fifth overall, I believe. Fifth overall in the nation as a state, and the county ranks uh, 17th overall in the nation and second highest county currently right now in the state of Michigan. It's a, it's a proud statement, again, that just shows you that Macomb County residents do care, they are paying attention, and they want their money back. So Census 2020, fill it out, bring back our money. Uh, with that being said, there's plenty of information even about the census, if you will, on macombgov.org, as well as all the information we're talking about dealing with this COVID crisis. So thanks again for tuning in and remember to keep yourself and your family safe.